Hi there, I'm your host and moderator Lance Hart. Today, we will be talking about embracing digital transformation with VMware. And today joining me, I have Matt Douglas from CBTS. Hello. We also have Michael Lenard from VMware. Hello, everyone. And we have Dave McNabola from VMware as well. Nice to meet you. Nice to join you. Guys, let's jump right in. Uh, Michael, why don't you give us an overview of what SD-WAN is? Sure. So VMware SD-WAN is a secure access service ed edge platform, and it combines WAN networking with security options. And it's really well suited for healthcare organizations that are embracing cloud architectures and software as a service. So. Uh, this platform provides a secure and optimized connectivity for healthcare users at the hospital, at the clinic, or at home. And it prioritizes critical applications. It automates troubleshooting. It can administer web and um, network security. And, and it simplifies operations by combining LAN and WAN management with security into a single solution. So. If, if we dig into just a little bit more, it's an SDN-like uh, software. It, it creates a virtual overlay network, and it really brings in the intelligence into the network uh, to do things like traffic steering. And it does this, you know, in a very flexible and agile way. Uh, so it's it's ideal for organizations that are transitioning to the cloud and embracing uh, their their digital transformation. Yeah, and I'll, I'll add a little bit to that too, Lance. Um, you mentioned kind of applications, right, when you were talking to Michael, and that's one of the things that excites me about these new fabrics, and particularly VMware SD-WAN fabric, is really about being able to identify the most important applications in your organization, uh, where those applications sit, whether those applications are going site to site, site to data center, site to SaaS or cloud or Azure AWS, um, and it's really an enabling technology to take internet access and to kind of apply MPLS-like quality of service rules and really start down to being able to talk about delivering a per application quality of experience even across the internet. We're gonna go into some of those things today. So oh, yeah. it's, a, it's a completely different way to look at how you engineer application delivery across a network of clouds is the way I like to think of it. Yeah, very well said. So uh, I got a question. Uh, are there really any differences today between different SD-WAN technologies? Oh, absolutely. Um, that's one of the things for CBTS. When, when we got into the SD-WAN game, uh, going back about six years ago, we actually put a big RFP out, uh, built a test lab internally with some tools to be able to inject you know, jitter and latency and loss into a test plan. Again, test an application site to site, site to data center, site to cloud, and really wanted to see how these performed, right? In the in the face of circuits going down or circuits brown out, packet loss, these kinds of things. And it was just, it was, it was very interesting, the differences in these platforms. Um, and in particular, VMware SD-WAN is really a packet-based technology and a technology that can do per application steering that can you know even uh, fix packet loss in the middle of that transmission and we're going to talk about today too some of the cloud gateways vmware uh, sd-wan has some 1700 or so i don't know remember, kind of forget the exact number cloud gateways across the globe so there are some big differences in technologies out there um and s you know sd uh, vmware sd-wan continues to lead the pack for us, you know, we made that choice some five years ago, and it's borne out that, you know, you look at the last Garten report, last three years, it's been VMware SD-WAN at the top upper right-hand quadrant. So there's a there's a serious differences out there in technologies today on the SD-WAN and SASE front. And you mentioned the uh, the Bake Off. Uh, do you want to talk a little bit more about that? Well, so yeah, this is kind of a visual representation of some of the things that we found out, right? Um, our history, CBTS, we've been big in the telephony side as well, delivering voice and video across in the past traditional networks. And that was one of the reasons why people had MPLS networks or, you know, point to point or Metro E networks is that they in particular wanted to be able to reliably deliver voice and video across this fabric. 
And so one of the things that really just shocked us when we first started to take a look at this five years ago was the ability for VMware SD-WAN, because it can see this packet, this per application stream, in this case, you see video on the stream here, uh, you can see, you can, it can tell that single application again, site to site, site to data center, even to site cloud UCAS providers, and be able to take a look at that and say, wait a minute, I've got a brownout condition. Maybe I'm, you know, at a branch with a single internet, you know, cable connection, and it's in a 3% packet loss today. In the past, that would have destroyed a video session or destroyed a voice session. And literally, VMware SD-WAN can sense that, and through a form of forward error correction of actually packet duplication and reassembly, start to send multiple packets, reassemble them on the other end, and the application doesn't even have any idea. So this is just kind of a visual representation that we can actually fix packet loss and fix a video stream. We actually did in our lab, we tested up to 20% packet loss on a voice call, and it was still usable. And that was unheard of before these kinds of technologies. Oh, thank you. Um, I got a question for uh, Michael. Uh, why do I need a partner to, de to help me deploy SD-WAN? Can I just do this myself? Well, you know, you, you can do it yourself and some organizations do, but it takes a, a, a fair amount of effort. You know, it's easier than setting up your, your legacy routers, but it's still networking. And there's a number of things that, that you have to do. So, um, as, as Matt just mentioned, the infrastructure is already in place. It's cloud delivered. So by working with the partner, you don't have to sort through, you know, you'll get a consultation on which equipment to use and the gateways are already there in place to, to optimal, provide optimal routing of traffic to the cloud. And you're going to, um, you're going to go through a process. So, uh, you know, as, as um, Matt mentioned, you've got application per application steering. Well, you need to take a look at your applications. What applications do you have and how should they be prioritized? And then look at your network. You know, where do you need these the edge device for the SDN to be placed? Uh, how much capacity do you need? What kind of performance? And, and a big thing is, you know, you'll be handing off the management to an organization that has done this many times. So, you know, the. the the, the more times you do things, you, the better you get at it. And for, for an organization that already has a lot going on with their digital transformation, they can free up their staff to focus on things that are core to the business um, and, and let the partner take care of the networking. That's been a big value, big value proposition, I think. <clears throat> yes, in that um, it's kind of like UCAS, right? People ran their own phone systems forever and finally said, wait a minute, if I could find a partner to deliver that in the cloud, to take care of my moves, ads, and changes, to take care of repair if something was needed, then I'm gonna to move to UCAS. I'm gonna take my voice and move it to the cloud. And as Michael talked about this SD-WAN fabric, right? There's a, a fair amount of work and consulting done to try and identify, okay, where are these applications sitting? What's the prioritization we need to place on these? Uh, what flows might not even use SD-WAN? There's times where we meet with customers and say, okay, guest internet access at a particular location, we're gonna dump out this way locally. This traffic destined for a data center, we're gonna treat this way. This traffic destined for cloud and, and, and for a SaaS, we're gonna treat this way. So our value proposition has been about kind of experienced project management teams, subject matter experts that can work with your network associates and understand where are these applications, where are your data centers, where are your locations, how are we gonna roll this out? Just the logistics of rolling it out across 10, 50 locations, that's what we're kind of known for helping. And then that day two support, right, as somebody maybe acquires a new location, um, you know, buys a new company or something, wants to bring that in, wants to deploy a new set of applications. Uh, we had a customer that in the middle of our uh, work with them decided they were gonna move their entire IVR voice platform to AWS and we placed, placed a virtual edge in AWS and provided consulting with there on the AWS side as well. So to your point, Michael, I think this digital transformation and where people are moving, managed service providers can take a workload off of the existing IT staff to really allow them to focus on strategic work and we become the partner then to help not only deploy it, but support that day too. Yep, that's right. It, it, I want to throw a quick announcement out there before we move on to a couple other questions that we have. Uh, I forgot to mention that we have, uh, there's a link that uh, CBTS posted in the comments. 
and we'll be giving away uh, some gift cards at, at the end of our session today. So uh, please uh, sign up via the link and then we'll announce the winners at the end of our uh, a session here today. Um, next question we have is, uh, if, if we use MPLS and Metro eFiber today to reliably deliver our uh, mission critical applications, can SD-WAN provide the same level of quality over internet? Well, that's the nice thing about SD-WAN is it can bring you the best of the private network and the best of the internet. Uh, so it can, it's agnostic to the kind of link that you're going over, but you know, over the internet, as we mentioned, it can do traffic steering. So it makes sure that your traffic's going over a reliable link. You can use multiple links. Uh, so if one of them has packet loss or even um, goes completely out, the um, traffic will switch and it'll do it as we notice in the uh, in the video it'll do it seamlessly because of the packet by packet uh, steering and you can also you can have bandwidth reservation for your critical applications you get optimal routing to the cloud um, through the gateways and then going on to the cloud transit gateways um, and you know the internet it is redundant and survivable um, so it can provide some advantages, you know, if you are doing dual links and have these different capabilities turned on that I've mentioned. And, and even more so than dual did, links, oh, right, Mike, yeah, I was saying even more than dual links is that these technologies now provide for, you know, multiple three, four internet links, or we're mm -hmm. gonna talk about even links to, you know, hybrid networks like MPLS, et cetera. So um, I contend that actually over a traditional MPLS network that these new technologies actually can deliver a higher quality of service and higher redundancy than the old traditional networks, right? You know, we, we would, I grew up selling telecom, been doing this for 20 years on the sales engineering side. And we would go in and sell somebody an MPLS network and a managed router at the edge. And we'd run BGP with internet. Mm -hmm. And you had a problem and you have convergence times of 20 seconds or oh, yeah. applications mm -hmm. die. And that's not the case. We, you, you literally could be on an active call or an active TCP or Citrix session and unplug an internet connection and have sub-second rollover and the TCP st session stays up and the application stay up. And so I, I contend there's actually more resiliency and a robust quality of experience over the traditional networks that we've used in the past. Hey, so, so, so questions, does that mean I have to get rid of uh, MPLS or Metro E networks? No. Um, now, I think eventually you, you're going to see that. Um, we have a number of customers that will keep MPLS. Um, let's say that maybe I've got four large distribution centers around the country, a couple data centers, and maybe 20 sales offices. Oftentimes, we'll be keeping MPLS at the edge of a distribution center plugged into a VMware SD-WAN box with additional internet access because this SD-WAN, the, the overlay technology, the ability to route traffic across either an IP, you know, over the MPLS or across internet, this overlay can go across any of these networks, right? So and we've got other situations like uh, financial institutions, 20 location uh, banks, let's say, um, where they love their Metro E network that they have locally, but those things terminating to an existing kind of Cisco router and technology, um, wasn't didn't converge fast enough or didn't have IPsec encryption across all these traffic. So the, the SD-WAN fabric uh, can can incorporate existing layer two or MPLS networks, yet even have advantages layering over these technologies on top of them. And um, question I had, and, uh, our mission critical applications are quickly leaving our data centers to cloud and uh, SaaS provided solutions, you know, how can SD-WAN help me access these applications across the internet? Well, we touched on some of that, but an important point is that you can go straight from the branch out to the cloud. You don't have to go over the private network to the data center uh, through the legacy infrastructure, like say the firewall, the VPN and, and the router, you can go straight out to the cloud over the internet um, attached to our gateway and then have you know so you're getting all of the benefits of sd-wan and then you're getting the optimal routing into the cloud uh, as we mentioned our gateways are 
co-located quite often with the cloud providers. We uh, interoperate with their backbone networks. Um, so really you're, you're getting the benefit of the traffic steering, the dual links, uh, the direct access to the cloud and connecting to the gateways. Yeah, in particular, I'd like to add a little bit about the gateways here because this is really a game changer. This is a big differentiation uh, uh, in the SD-WAN world between VMware and all of its competitors. These cloud gateways, if you would, are, are put in, in tier one content data centers in the United States and around the globe. So they're sitting next to SaaS applications, right? And this technology then is basically allowing applications from a branch to be bookended deeper in the internet. And so now we can protect against packet loss or circuit loss in the last mile, mid mile. So, you know, you could be on a phone, you know, from Ring Central, let's say, in your branch and literally disconnect your internet connection because we've taken and with these, these gateways, taking that deeper in the internet, closer to Ring Central, that calls will stay up. It'll roll over in sub second and stay up. And so these gateways then make SaaS applications more available, can fix packet loss, right? And then these gateways as well can be used to connect to other third-party resources. We've worked with companies that have got a third-party vendor that they'd like to build a VPN structure into. And we can use these gateways to connect to that. We can use these gateways to connect to other secure web gateway services, right? So the gateways are a huge differentiator in how VMware SD-WAN can facilitate a network of clouds, if you would, and whether that cloud is SaaS, whether that cloud's an AWS, whether it's a third-party cloud, whether, whether it's a UCAS provider from somebody else, it's really about enabling this whole per application quality of experience delivery, no matter where your applications are sitting out there in the cloud. If I may add one, one point that I think is often overlooked, is these uh, cloud gateways provide, and you'll see this in the demo, uh, the quality of service is not just to the internet, it is from the internet. So let that sink in. We provide you the ability to do fine-tuned quality of service, remediation, prioritization, traffic handling from the internet. Unheard of otherwise. So that, yeah, that's that's, yeah, that's right, the traffic's both directions yeah. uh, with the optimization. Yeah. So, so with talking about SD WAN over the internet, you know, can uh, a new SD WAN internet fabric be HIPAA and PCI compliant over the internet? Well, so the interesting thing, and we could have an hour long discussion on, on this, but I'll, I'll get into it briefly. You know, HIPAA provides guidelines and and suggests outcomes. Uh, so the service needs to be set up in a way that's compliant. And with VMware SD-WAN, we provide a lot of tools for that. And, and customers can work with CBTS and have a consultation on how you know, to be compliant. So there's a couple of rules. There's rules around uh, privacy and there's rules around security. And so the main thing is you've got to protect personal health information um, and you've got to secure it. So you know, SD-WAN by itself provides mechanisms for protecting data. One thing is, of course, we don't store any data, but you can set it up to, con um, to control access, you know, to authenticate who's getting on. Uh, you can segment the network, as we're, yep. we're seeing here. You can, you can keep, um, say, guest traffic separate. You can keep Internet of Things traffic uh, separate. Uh, you can keep the data, the, the patient data separate. Um, and, and we provide firewalling as well, or you can do what we call services insertion. You can send traffic to a third party firewall. In some cases, you can run a firewall on the SD-WAN edge device. Uh, we're also you know, payment card compliant. So you know, organizations quite often after uh, treatment, they need to bill the customer and they, um, they need to know that that payment card information is secure as well. And uh, of course we provide, uh, as I mentioned, data integrity by not storing data. Uh, we encrypt the data when it's in transmission. And a, and a big part, you know, a lot of organizations use Epic and we're finding that they don't 
always want to host it themselves. They want to access it, you know, over a, a virtual desktop infrastructure. So uh, SD-WAN has ways to prioritize the VDI environment. And also you can um, put it through security capabilities and um, uh, make sure, you know, that it's the encryption is maintained and that it's segmented. So I'd say it's really a matter of um, uh, having that consultation, figuring out, you know, what equipment do you have, uh, what locations do you have, what applications are you using, and then make sure that these different capabilities are applied appropriately. And, and gotcha. just the SD-WAN really becomes part of the fabric, right, of control and security. Um, because part of this as well, right, in the consulting is then how do you extend this edge device um, it's fabric, right? It, it's prioritization routing fabric. And then how do you ex extend it into CASB services, right? So that we have both control and security as people are going to applications, both internally and externally. So um, that's what excites me about this platform. Why we really chose it five years ago as it's grown, why we're still, you know, we're a huge proponent. We've done some 700 customers in 7,000 locations just in the last three years. Um, it, because its ability, its extensive nature, really, to be able to layer on secure web gateway services, layer on CASB services. It's part of the whole system of control and security across all your applications, whether they're in the data center, whether they're in the cloud. Yeah, and, and, and that's a great segue to this question. You yeah. know, does moving to SD-WAN and going from our locations to the cloud over the internet require changes to my security and firewall fabric? Um, it doesn't, it's not necessarily, quote, required, but it is part of every single SD-WAN conversation we have because it's a brand new way to look at how do you insert security into this environment, right? Because traditionally we had networks, particularly in healthcare world, that were MPLS or Metro E networks back to headquarters going out one common firewall, right? So. Now we move these cloud applications and instead of hairpinning that traffic back, now we can start to dump that out locally, but we've got security concerns, right? And so that security insertion points, really, we can still keep firewalls back at a data center. We can insert security and UTM services at the edge, either on a SD-WAN appliance or appliance behind it, or then because again, this network of clouds and the gateway services connect then to secure web gateway services, CASB services, ZTNA services that can kind of sit at the edge here. So that to me is um, one, of the, one of the really exciting and powerful things about the VMware SD-WAN fabric is its ability to insert and kind of have different uh, insertion points, if you would, for security wherever you need it across that fabric. Uh, to add on to that, so the, the historical uh, paradigm of, of firewalling and security was network, network. I protect this network from that. And then it got these users on this network to that. But really where we are now is users, indiscriminate of what device or mechanism of access and applications. And I don't know where they are. They could be in the data center, a partner in the cloud, IAS, wherever. And so now how do I actually apply that? How do I apply that security? And SD-WAN is, is really the enabling factor of being able to do all of because now you can get any, anyone to anywhere, any way, and have the control point be uh, uh, managing them regardless of how they're accessing it. Um, yeah, just uh, also want to throw it out there, another reminder, uh, link to the gift cards uh, within the comments at, on LinkedIn. If you could uh, click the link and, and sign up for a gift card, that'd be great. Um, guys, I keep hearing about SAS e how is that different than SD-WAN? Um, it's kind of an extension of this idea, right? The, the word stands for Secure Access Service Edge. And the idea is if you've got an intelligent edge that can build out this, this, this network of, of clouds, if you would, right? Build out a network of application security and prioritization, and then be able to connect to you know, and add on ZTNA services, you know, zero trust network access services for, for, for offerings, the, the kind of CASB service as well, like control and security as we're going to cloud applications. 
uh, secure web gateway. This, this has really changed a lot because when I, I've been I've been now with with S Velo, uh, VMware SD WAN now for five years. Started when it was still Velo Cloud before VMware bought them, uh, which is by the way has been a great investment because they've done nothing but just continue to expand on this platform. But when we first started to work with Velo Cloud and VM, VMware SD WAN, excuse me, um, we were still typically customers were doing traditional firewalls. And just over the last kind of two years, people have said, wait a minute, why do I want to have my day zero threat plane at the edge of my network? Why don't I move that out to a secure web gateway services, right? So that when I'm in network and I'm coming out, my day zero threat plane's now in the cloud, right? So all my UTM services are coming from the cloud. My ZTNA is coming back from the cloud. And the same thing happens though. Let's say now I take my laptop out of the network and I'm working from Starbucks, now I can have those same kinds of services, right? So Dave mentioned a little bit earlier kind of about where workers are going. You know, they're going everywhere in the network. They're leaving the network. I mean, I personally, right, since the pandemic, I've probably been in the office 10 times in the last two years. And so my security fabric is now home going through our network. So um, SASE is really about taking this SD-WAN fabric and layering in the, in the security and control components to protect as my users go to SaaS applications, as they need VPN or ZTNA access, or they're going out for secure web gateway services, and then you start layering in email protection, these other kinds of things. So it's a whole nother way to look at bringing all of my security fabric together into one control plane, if you would. Uh, hospital systems. Oh, go ahead. Sorry. You just can't do that with MPLS. <laughs> just, no. just as an aside note, there you can't yeah. do that with metric. No, right? traditional, traditional it, networks, it, internet access it, routers. There was no way to do that. Yep. The, the the internet thing is, I can be anywhere from anywhere on anything, but the problem with it is, I'm I'm anywhere from anywhere, right? So we've uh, we've enabled imp imposition of quality upon best effort. Uh, and 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 so you get the benefits of the ubiquity of the internet without all of the constraints that typically um, follow it. Yeah, to, just to restate again, kind of the idea of SASE is really kind of five core components, right? It's SD-WAN, it's edge, it's kind of a zero trust environment, right? For network access, mm -hmm. it's secure web gateway services, CASB services, and then firewalls of service. It's really kind of those five big components coming together in one, one single offering. Yeah. So hospitals uh, are often loaded with IoT devices. Uh, can VMware SD-WAN and SASE technology help with identifying when and why issues, uh, users experience issues or device connectivity issues? Uh, security comprom comprom compromising behavior uh, it, it can can that help uh, identify those issues when they come up? Uh, yes, it can, and this is really a big area, of, you know, of transformation for hospitals and for healthcare. You know, you have uh, remote visits now, where um, everything is going over video conferencing, and you have devices where you're monitoring the patient and those communicate over the network. Um, it, and you've got medical procedures even that are being done with, you know, network enabled equipment. And we um, recently worked with a company called ESG and they did a survey on this and found that more than 20% of hospitals have an IOT initiative and more than half plan to deploy, you know, in the next year to two years. So this is an area where hospitals really need to look hard at what they're going to do. So you need things like network segmentation for the IoT traffic. And you need to ensure that these devices, sometimes they're handheld and, and they're being or they're being rolled around, you know, through the hospital. They need good connectivity as they're moving. And, and another thing is, of course, it, is you need a monitoring system. You need to know what's going on with uh, these devices and with the network. And so as part of the VMware SD-WAN, we have what we call edge network intelligence. This is um, a monitoring reporting uh, capability, but it's it's more advanced, more detailed than what we had previously. And so this ENI can gather traffic and then set a baseline and then look for anomalies and it can alert the staff, you know, that something's going on 
uh, with a connection or with a device before, may, maybe even before they notice, certainly before they pick up the phone and call the IT department. So a big part of you know, this transformation for hospitals is to have a good monitoring system and making sure your, your network connections are up, your applications are getting the bandwidth they need and your devices are connected and working properly. I know sometimes it's go. it's like finding a, a needle in a haystack when okay. you're looking for certain issues. Does this oh, tool yeah. help with that? Is that oh, yeah. I see that in the demo today? Yeah, it really helps with troubleshooting, identifying where the problem is and then getting to resolution quickly. Yeah, Lance, before we go to the demo here, and, 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 and we're going to show that, but um, that's one of the beauties, right, is the idea you've got cloud orchestration and visibility into all these edge devices and now with ENI actually into applications and how they run across this fabric. And now you got a single pane of glass to be able to get reporting and alerting out on to see how circuits have been working. You know, it's something as simple in the past as when I when I had a particular problem with circuit and it happened to me a couple days in a row and now I call that service provider to work on, they're like, hey, it's working fine to me. I've actually got I've got <laughs> historical data to say, no, no, no. Yesterday between 2 and 2.30, you had 10% packet loss going this direction, et cetera. So this pain at this visibility um, over your network, over your edge devices, your, your internet, your internet connections, your MPLS connections, over applications running apart. That's what excites me about the demo I think we're going to show here. It's a new way to look at managing your network and applications across it. Well, that sounds like a great segue to, to start the demo. Uh, uh, Dave, if you're ready, uh, I'll go ahead and uh, move everybody else backstage and you can uh, share your screen. Okay. Hi there, I'm Dave Magdalena and I'm with VMware. And I'm here to give you a demo of DMPO and the overall VMware SD-WAN solution. Before I start with the demo, I'd like to get a quick overview of the components. First, you have the uh, VMware SD-WAN Edge. This is a physical or virtual appliance that goes in your branch, your data center, your IAS. Um, and like I said, it could be virtual in you know, IAS or on a hypervisor. Uh, then you have the orchestrator, which is a single pane of glass to manage, uh, to monitor, and to uh, generate reports for the entire network, the entire SD-WAN network, so all of the edges all in one single pane of glass. And then the real differentiator here is the gateways. Now these are hosted uh, uh, devices that are SD-WAN endpoints as a service, and they are in telecom hotels where they're peered with uh, the major SaaS providers, the IAS providers, uh, tier one internet providers. So you can kind of think of these as all at the best points in the internet. And there are thousands of them across myriad uh, pops and therefore regardless of where that branch is there's one close by you know within we believe within 10 milliseconds worst case uh, anywhere in the world uh, so um, what happens is we you utilize this to get to and from the internet now uh, in the interest of time i'm going to go right to um, the orchestra so how does that look so we have right here this very edge behind me that i'm using uh, and you'll see that I have, well, let me show you the diagram first here. I'm this green guy in my home office, this 510 LTE is here. I have a Windows server running right here. Uh, then I have two links, one 10 meg up, 10 meg down, 25 meg up, 25 meg down is the second one. Giggy three is the 10, Giggy four is the 25. And then I put a, WAN, a little uh, open source WAN emulator on Giggy four and I add latency in each direction. So this is a slower internet link. And then I drop 9% of the packets going towards the internet. Then I spun up a Azure VNet, uh, put a, out of the marketplace, um, SD-WAN Edge, activated it, and then put a Windows 10 machine, which I'm going to bring up right here uh, through RDP. Boom. Let me log in. Yep. And um, then, of course, this webinar is being uh, broadcast it on the internet and that's using my local gate, my closest gateway. So what does that look like uh, in the orchestrator? So there's the orchestrator doing, oh, I'm gonna get it to do live again. There we go, stay. Okay, so you'll see I'm sending most of my traffic on this 10 meg 
some of it on uh, this other one. Um, but I have all this loss, so I mitigate loss. One of the features of our SD WAN is that not only can it load balance across multiple links to another destination, but it can also fix loss and jitter buffer while preserving QoS um, between links. So it's seamless um, transfer between links. Another way of looking at this, I think would be more useful is looking at each transport. <laughs> And I'm going to do TCP and UDP, and we'll get rid of this backup. And we're going to look at throughput. And we don't care about ping or control traffic. So you'll see this blue, in the case of what I'm doing here, I'm the only I'm this in a phone, but the phone's not on. This UDP is the real time traffic. This is my voice, my video. Okay. I'm doing a 4K camera here, so it's very high <laughs> video bandwidth. Uh, the, uh, the, TCP is the screen share and the X and all that. And you'll see it bleeds a little bit over here. Um, uh, but in general, it doesn't. Um, and what I'm going to do is from this machine, which is in Azure, I'm going to start a speed test to my uh, Macintosh right here and jam up down. So my inbound will start being filled. And if we look at what happens here, TCP jumps up to 10, and here it jumps up to 23, right? nearly all of it, right? So we're load balancing that, that uh, speed test, right? The second thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to this Windows server that's here as well. I'm gonna grab a giant file. Let's go to SureDocs. This is the server that's here. Uh, and I'm gonna grab a giant, whoop, grab a giant file and pull it up from my machine. So you'll see this as the bottom bottom two here. And this is almost full with that. So it starts putting it on this one. Now, keep in mind, I'm getting that much DCP, even though I got this ridiculous amount of loss. So it, it works even in the in the presence of loss. Now, the, the coup de grace, now keep in mind that the voice and the video are going to the internet and the speed test and the file transfer are going to the Azure VNet. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm gonna cut my uh, my good link. That's gig E3. That's this guy here, and uh, I'm gonna do it in uh, three seconds. One, two, three. So I pulled it. You'll see, it dies here. If we go to the other, you didn't notice anything, right? So that uh, you see everything just shifts over here. When you start, what happens is we do uh, selective negative. We we only ask to resend the packets we're missing for TCP, but for UDP real time high, we send it twice. So so we double up the amount of bandwidth just because there's that loss and we want to proactively do it without adding jitter. Um, so I'm going to plug this back in and move on to edge network intelligence to show you that. Let me stop these things so I don't have that much traffic. All right. So um, we acquired a company about two years ago called Nyansa. Nyansa is the vanguards of AI ops. And what they do is they take a, um, a tap, which is a, uh, monitoring the traffic in and out of a branch and taking the metadata of that plus tying into APIs or SNMP or NetFlow of switches or APs and taking all that data, putting it in a big data cloud, you know, uh, private to each customer and then correlating everything and baselining behavior and performance. And then once it has a baseline, it can compare it to other peers in your industry that are of relatively the same size and layout and also um, yourself, right? So if things start to deviate, it can immediately point that out. So this is the first, we, uh, the overview. We see a few P6s, not too bad, um, but we drill down to uh, the summary. This would be what the knock would have. And you'll see from on the top, a P1 would be the worst. So these are kind of bad. Now these are relative based on like the site, uh, the, the number of um, clients uh, affected and you'll see that we give you the bat the past 24 hours worst worst uh, applications um we have um the ability to go and drill down across um uh, 45 000 clients on this and two of them have a vulnerable google chrome here's the advisory here's what you need to do here are the two you can export it send it off uh, another uh, view that you have is uh, service desk so somebody gives you a call they say hey uh, the network's slow. 
and it's a VP. So you try to find, this is like Google. So I could even look for like an iPhone and it'll make fun, but if you, you find them through however you have to. Once you find them, you say, okay, okay, sir, what's the problem? Well, for the past two weeks, yes, sir, the network has been slow. And that's all they tell you. Now, this is a nightmare for IT because it's basically like taking your car to the shop and saying, hey, it's broken. I'll be back at five to pick it up. Uh, so uh, we do that and bam, it's a persistent problem and it's a lot of uh, AP inter interference and it looks like there's a rogue. So somebody has an AP on their desk that's messing up everything. But also there's it found another event in the past two weeks that might be it. Oh, DHCP. So uh, the server's not reachable. Okay, so we can share that summary, copy, paste it, send it off to the tech. You're good to go. Let me get out of that. Uh, another view that you have is inventory. A lot of times in hospitals, now we're huge with hospitals. We're partnered with GE Medical. We, we crack their proprietary protocol, protocols even. But uh, one of the things that, um, no, 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 no. well, critical device. So in a hospital, lots of things are critical. Let's, you group these once you, once it auto discovers everything. And it says, oh, this zebra touch computer is talking to a high risk host. Wait a minute, let's see what's going on there. Um, and here's all the information of this particular device. What's happening? Oh, look at this. It's talking to a high, it, well, first off, why is it talking outside, outside of the hospital, right? And, and then if you click on this, it'll say, hey, there were three hits. Where were they? There's one right here, uh, 5K uh, sent and 19K down. This is something you probably want to check out. Uh, so it's able to find the needle in the haystack. Another thing you could do is um, a history of your network. And looking across this uh, band, we can look at uh, client Wi-Fi uh, across the whole campus. You can narrow it down. You can do it by a percent affected higher. This is like who, what percentage has a uh, suboptimal performance. And this line right here is the industry benchmark. You can look at what is your benchmark. You're normally here. So... We're having some bad Wi-Fi these days. Um, so you can start looking at these, but then you can switch. Oh, okay, well then how is my Citrix working? Um, like my, my virtual desktop. And again, we have the the uh, performance. So it's like higher is worse. Um, and here are the two standards. You're not doing too badly there. Um, but you get the, the beauty of this is you can put these annotations and say, hey, I changed something and then watch. Did it get better? Did it get worse? And then you can, you know, pivot on any one of these applications you run in your network or uh, any normal um, normal network type specific things. Uh, finally, let's see, inventory. There it is, inventory. So if I want to look at IoT groups, so you, you literally have all of your devices that are discovered here. It automatically figures out what they are and puts them in a category. But then you can do something like say, search for smart. And so this is in your network. Look at this. I have a Vizio. I've got a Ford car. <laughs> Why is this Ford attached to my network? I better make sure, if I click on it, I better make sure that on VLAN 6, 640 is a, um, is a guest Wi-Fi ought not be on my regular network. That could be a huge thing. So uh, not only can you see how many of each device you have and where they are, but you can see things that shouldn't be there um, if, um, if, if necessary. And you can even see who he's talking to, et cetera. Um, I've run out of time, but uh, hopefully this was useful to you. And uh, if you have any other questions, we can arrange to have a uh, much more in-depth demo for you. Okay. Thank you so much. Very good. Um, yeah, guys. Uh, what do you? What are your thoughts there, Matt? I, that's that tool looks pretty pretty amazing. Um, again, it kind of it just completely changes how you can look at your network, the anomalies you're looking for. One of the things, and I'm actually still learning the ENI tool, to be honest with you. Mm -hmm. But what excites me about this is VMware's investment in layering it into their into the SD WAN uh, um, offering. Uh, and, and we and when we uh, deliver our SD WAN services, we layer on ENI with every single user. Uh, but its ability now to to layer in an AI ops kind of a uh, of a uh, operation into what is now your SD WAN fabric. So. Um, 
I think this single pane of glass is one of the biggest things that amaze customers when we're out there talking to them is the visibility they've got in their network now and the control of their network on a per application level. So, yeah. And, and Dave question for you, uh, can you talk a little bit about the API and the additional data that you guys are doing with certain, certain types of technology? Uh, so, so everything we do is API driven. The, the, the okay. orchestrator is just a front end API calls. Um, and we, um, you know, there's a, there's a, a great deal of DevOps that's been utilized with the, the partners for automation of large deployments and things like that. Um, but also, um, oh, there was a point I was going to make and I can't, hmm, I'll think of it. Uh, but we use the API to tie in for ENI to tie into like say Meraki or um, gotcha. you know, cloud based. Right. And, or, you know, use SNMP to go to the controllers of like a, a Aruba or Cisco. And so we get all in more information that you get than you would if you're just, you know, grabbing right. the, the network idea traffic. Is, it's, not, it's not, it's not, what was it? The signal to noise. It was that one guy that did all the statistics. You get lots of uh, information, right? But, or lots of data rather, but there's no information. And what this does is puts it in context, correlates it by user application, et cetera location, time, and what other things were going on so that it doesn't just say, hey, Joe Blow is having problems with Citrix. It says, Joe Blow is having problems with Citrix, and here's why. This is happening, this is happening, this is happening. And maybe it's more than one thing, like that, that the example I gave where the troubleshooting, the network is slow. Think about how long, as an IT person, it would take you to even look at a DHCP server. That's like 87th on the list of 100 of things to check. You're going to spend a few days before you would even consider that being the problem. Uh, and this is, bam, there it is. There yeah, it is. You know, I, I was an IT guy many years ago, and I'm sitting there going, <laughs> why didn't we have this? And every time uh, every time I see Dave Damwood, I'm like, wow, there's some new cool thing in there. Right? And, uh, so, yeah, yeah, you're, you're exactly right that it's mm -hmm. it really provides that, that single pane of glass, that overall insight. And, and fix it before it before you get the you know the yeah. death threats right yeah. so yeah. so guys i think we're coming uh, up close on time and um i'll just throw this slide up while we're uh, announcing our winners but it looks like we have four folks that will be getting a gift card and they'll get an email after the event so congratulations and uh those individuals are Kevin Atkinson, Michael Dulac, Dulac. Sorry about that for tearing your name up like that. Uh, Chris Meyer, and the fourth person is Jennifer Brown. Congratulations to all of you. Thanks for watching and participating. Uh, guys, any last uh, thoughts or comments here before we wrap things up? Um, I'll, I'll throw one last one out. Uh, one, thanks for taking the time out of your busy day to join us here because uh, we've all got a lot to do. Um, I wanted to give a little bit of shameless plug for CBTS in that you've been hearing a lot of technology here. And one thing I want you to understand is it's not kind of an all or nothing decision. We work with a lot of companies that have already started to make particular security investments in secure web gateway services or other CASB services. And one of the beautiful things about the VMware SD-WAN fabric is our ability to incorporate other frameworks, right? I kind of, we, we think of the VMware SD-WAN really as a framework of SASE so that even if you've already started to make some other investments in other security areas, uh, we really can get together, show you the value of what VMware SD-WAN can do and how we can incorporate even your existing investments. So I just want to make sure that we got that out. Fantastic. Well, guys, I uh, really appreciate everybody taking the time today. And I think uh, until next time, take care and have a great afternoon. Thank All right. You. Thank you. Thank you.